band is composed of two lobes, right and left lobe. Usually, normally, the right lobe is larger than the left lobe, leash, I don't know. And they are connected in the middle with, uh, by the isthmus. The size of the gland uh, ranges from 12 to 20 grams. This is a normal, while in pathology it may attain, it may attain kilo, uh, 100 grams or more, um, half kilogram or one gram, it depends on the size of the mass. So uh, enlargement of thyroid gland is called duotar, as you know. Uh, the anatomically, you see uh, this, uh, the, the, the site of the gland is in the middle of the neck, and uh, between the cricoid uh, cartilage and the suprasternal notch, the uh, located anterior to the trachea, and it is related to the recurrent laryngeal nerve uh, uh, from behind the closer. With, uh, that's why in surgery uh, you have to uh, avoid the traumatization of this trachea, otherwise, as the aphonia or vocal cord paralysis will happen. This is a quite common. And the thyroid gland attached posteriorly in two pairs of uh, parathyroid gland, and two inferior and two superior parathyroid gland embedded in the tissue. The histologically speaking, the gland is composed of follicular cells, a cubic, a cuboidal cells, and the surrounding a uh, vacuum uh, called the uh, colloid. Colloid. Uh, this, these cells, uh, columnar cells or cuboidal cells, called follicular cells, they uh, secrete other colloid, the uh, thyroglobulin. Uh, these uh, cells are important in the synthesis and um, release of uh, th uh, thyroid hormone T3, T4. And uh, as you see, we will see uh, next how it's, how are these synthesized. And so also there are other cells uh, called medullary thyroid cells that secretes calcitonin, which is important in homeostasis of calcium uh, regulation in the body. So uh, the thyroid is supplied with uh, arterial blood from the superior thyroid artery, uh, a branch of the external carotid artery, uh, a branch of the external carotid artery, and inferior thyroid. So there are two, the, the, the gland is highly vascular and usually normally uh, uh, soft in, in consistency, not firm. Now, abnormally, it may be firm, it may be uh, hard. Uh, and usually it is uh, normally, it is fair, uh, soft in consistency and supplied by a vascular area, sub two arteries of blood supply, superior and inferior thyroid arteries, and you see uh, brachiocephalic trunk, uh, which gives uh, the main blood supply, the venous drainage is through superior thyroid vein, draining the internal jugular vein, and through inferior thyroid vein, draining the uh, through plexus uh, uh, in the left brachiocephalic vein. Lymphatic drainage is very important, and that's why in examination you have to palpate local, uh, you have to palpate the thyroid gland, and you give a glass of water or a milk, a juice, and tell him to, uh, or her, or her, to swallow in order to movement with the nutrition or not. Besides, uh, don't forget to palpate for thyroid gland, for thyroid, uh, for uh, lymph nodes, uh, it may be involved in malignancy as well, so it's part of examination or local is valvation of supra, uh, supra clavicular lymph nodes and cervical lymph nodes. And that's why you have to know about lymphatic drainage, which uh, frequently passes the lateral deep cervical lymph nodes and the pre and paratracheal uh, para lymph nodes. The gland is supplied by parasympathetic nerve input from the superior laryngeal nerve and the recurrent end. So it has parasympathetic, and that's why it may affect by it may be affected by uh, the ketoconomy. Uh, Next, this is the anatomy uh, that is mentioned to you. You see the uh, endocrine gland uh, in the pituitary. Uh, the gland in the brain, uh, thyroid gland. There is uh, 
interregulation between the hormones, the thymus and the subrenal gland, the last pancreas, and ovaries and testes and male. Uh, here, as we uh, mentioned, you see the position of the gland, the right and left lobes, and in, uh, the isthmus in between them, and uh, trachea. Sometimes, if it becomes very large, it will compress the trachea and the esophagus. Uh, that's why there will be compressive effect, and for the patient will present to you, even in simple gota, uh, may come to you because of dyspnea or because of this pitch. You see. Next, embryologically speaking, the gland comes or emits from the floor of the uh, floor of the uh, base of the tongue, uh, uh, and uh, the gland then uh, descends down through the uh, thyroglossal cyst and uh, keeps itself in position. Sometimes, in the embryology, it may uh, it may be arrested in the uh, Third, and the base, in the base, and the posterior aspect of the tongue, and that's why it's called lingual thyroid. Well, sometimes uh, there is uh, a persistence of the thyroglossal cyst. How do you know? You have to keep uh, the patient. You have to ask the patient to swallow in order to know this uh, thyroglossal cyst present or absent uh, in the system. So, and the, the the gland is. Uh, formed in the uh, uh, natal, actually, the, the 12 weeks that it starts to secrete hormones, 12 weeks of pregnancy, of gestation. Uh, when the fetus, uh, three months, it starts to synthesize uh, hormones, T3, T4 hormones. You see, in the fetus, at the three to four weeks of gestation, the thyroid gland appears as an epithelial proliferation in the floor of the pharynx. You see, and it starts uh, ectodermal in the form of the pharynx uh, at the base of the tongue, as I have mentioned, between the tuberculum and uh, 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 pale and the uh, copula linguine at a point later indicated by the foramen cecum. So, in the foramen cecum, uh, it starts, then descends through the, the thyroglossal cell. The thyroid then descends in front of the pharyngeal gut as a bilobe diverticulum through the thyroglossal duct. This is very important in your embryology. I know you are not surgeon, you are physician, but it is important to uh, herald you uh, or to remind you uh, that uh, uh, congenital malformation of the thyroid gland, lingual thyroid or thyroid process. And so you have to uh, pass this information uh, as rapid, uh, as quickly as we can. During migration, the thyroid remains connected to the tongue by a narrow canal, the thyroid glossal cyst or duct. Uh, thyrotropin releasing hormone, TRH, uh, comes from hypothalamus. hypothalamus. It is glycoprotein, tripeptide, polypeptide, steroidal hormone. What is the nature of TRH? You are Boston graduate. Huh? What is TRH? It is a polypeptide hormone, comes from the hypothalamus. It causes release, so, uh, the, it, it, it stimulates the B23 to secrete TSH, and it stimulates B23 to secrete the prolactin. And that's why in patients with hypothyroidism, they have hyperprolactinemia beside to uh, high TSH. What is TSH? Thyroid synthesis, a polypeptide, steroid, glycoprotein. It is a glycoprotein secreted from the basophilic cells of the uh, anterior lobe of the pituitary gland. This hormone is has a diurnal rhythmicity. It is secreted higher at night when compared to morning. Diurnal. The second important character, it, is, uh, it has uh, a, a long half-life, 50 minutes. And that's why assessment of TSH, measurement of TSH, 
uh, used for diagnosis. Single uh, assessment is important uh, because it is not short uh, like ACTH. Uh, 10 minutes and disappears. That's why used in follow-up and diagnosis of cases. Uh, so TRH from the uh, thyroid, from the hypothalamus, uh, uh, secretes TSH from the pituitary and being secreted from the fetal hypothalamus and pituitary at 18 to 20 weeks, and even now about three months of gestation and fetal production of T4 reach clinically significant level at 18 to 20 weeks. Keep in your mind fetal hormones T3, T4 starts their secretion at 20 weeks of gestation or three months actually, about four months gestation. Fetal T3 remains low uh, until 30 weeks of gestation and decreases to uh, level at 10, 50 nanogram per deciliter at 10. Fetal self-sufficiency self of thyroid hormones protects the fetus against brain development abnormalities. As you know, the hormones, thyroid hormones are important for uh, growth develop and development, especially in neurological development. Well, that's why if there is hormone, thyroid hormone deficiency in infancy, they will have, they will have intellectual dysfunction or the low IQ or mental insufficiency, as in infant patients. So, however, preterm births can suffer neurodevelopmental disorders due to lack of maternal thyroid hormones, due to their own thyroid being insufficiently developed to meet their post needs. The portion of the gland containing the parafollicular cell, C cells, those responsible for the production, as I have mentioned, calcitonin, which is important hormone that regulate calcium homeostasis, uh, and it uh, uh, is important uh, for this purpose and uh, for this purpose and derived from the neural crest. I mean the parafollicular cells. And again, the gland be a follicular cells, follicular cells will be a parafollicular. The parafollicular uh, some C cells secrete calcitonin. Keep in mind, please, uh, this is a uh, first seen as the LT. Uh, more branchial body which joins the primordial thyroid gland during the, its descent to its final location in the anterior or portion of the gland of the neck. Aberrations in embryological that can cause various forms of uh, dysgenesis and it is important uh, in congenital hypo, hypothyroidism as we will see later. Next. This is the uh, embryology actually, and this is the uh, floor of the pharynx, or, and this is the uh, uh, divisions uh, from which the thyroid gland starts or emits. Next. What about physiologically? We know since you are both a graduate student and you are a candidate uh, and for higher studies in medicine, you know what is the physiological importance of the thyroid gland. It, it synthesizes uh, important, protein, important hormones, T3, T4, uh, which are important for the body uh, regulation, uh, blood, uh, temperature, and metabolic sequelae, so also neurological and cardiac function. No organ is immune against the uh, against their disorder. You see, whether hypo secretion or hypo uh, or hyper secretion. So it, uh, it affects uh, diverse organs or systems in the body. The primary function of the thyroid bro, uh, production, uh, gland is the production of the hormones T3 and T4 and as I have mentioned calcitonin from the parafollicular cell or C cell. Up to 80% of uh, T4 is converted to T3 by peripheral organs such as the liver, kidney, and spleen. T3, uh, again, is several times more powerful than T4, actually 10 times 
more potent than T4. T3 is more potent than T4 by 10 times. And T3 comes from peripheral, peripherally from T4 converted into T3. What is the fate of T3? It is converted or inactivated to be to become a reverse T3, a reverse T3, which is inactive form of T4, of T3, inactive. You see, this is it. So perhaps four or even 10 times more active than T4, as in, um, T, uh, how do these hormones produce and how do the, uh, their uh, action or effect? T4 is synthesized by the follicular cells from a free tyrosine, the amino acid tyrosine is the origin of uh, thyroid hormones, T3, T4, and it is the origin of dopamine and the origin of epinephrine and norepinephrine. So structurally they are related. I mean T3, T4 and catecholamines, they are structurally, that's why they share uh, some physiological effects on organs and tissues. And keep this point in your mind. So ty tyrosine uh, with thriving of iodine, coupled, uh, they will form uh, mono iodine tyrosine, then coupling of two molecules, uh, it becomes diiodine tyrosine, then triiodine tyrosine, then tetra uh, tyrosine. This is the way of important. And this a process of synthesis needs uh, iodine, needs a specific enzymes th and hydrogen peroxide beside to uh, peroxidase enzyme, you see? So if there is iodine deficiency, there will be thyroid disorder, hypothyroidism, goiter, or sometimes uh, the other way around, excess thyroid paradoxically may cause hyperthyroidism. If there is uh, peroxidase dis deficiency, what will happen? Goiter and hypothyroidism and bed rate syndrome uh, and the neurosensory deafness. So, and if there is uh, deficiency uh, in this uh, material or a tyrosine, well, all these are all these uh, ingredients are ingredients, important ingredients in the biosynthesis of the uh, thyroid hormone. So keep them in your mind. How do thyroid hormones circulate in the blood? It circulates either free thyroid, minimal portion, five to ten percent, usually bind to binds to protein. What is the protein? TBG, thyroid binding globulin or uh, thyroid uh, uh, previously, previously mentioned pre-albumin. So either free thyroxine, which is important for diagnosis of thyroid infection because TBG is affected by so many disorders, specifically in patients uh, with pregnancy. And you, if you want to check thyroid function in pregnancy, please send the free uh, thyroid hormones. Free, you, you will go to, uh, you will go, and you will get accurate results as far as, and you will not get pitfalls in diagnosis. This is very important. So thyroxine usually bind to, in the circulation, bind to TBG or pre-albumin, thyroidine, or it may be, it may be free thyroxine. The active. One is the free thyroxine. As you see, it is metabolized and cleared by the liver by the iodination process and uh, cleared from the circulation. So thyroid hormone secreted from the gland is about 80 to 90 percent T4 and about 10 percent T3. Uh, T3 can activate uh, phosphatidyl inositol three kinase by a mechanism that may be cytoplasmic in origin or maybe begin at intergrain alpha V beta 3. And the blood T4 and T3 are partially bound to thyroxine, TBG, and transthyretine and albumin. Only a very small fraction of the circulating hormone is free or unbound, which is important. T4, you see 0.03. Uh, or T3 point, uh, point 0.03, 0.3 percent. You see, fraction, uh, yes. 
uh, a small uh, fraction of the hormone uh, as a free, and that is the active. You see, if the quantity of a free thyroxine is large, tremendously large, what will happen to the tissues, to the cardiovascular, to the neurology, uh, CNS system, to the GI tract? Uh, what will happen? So it will be exaggerated action or effect on this hormone, as it happens in patients with the Graves disease or uh, patients with thyrotoxicosis, and we will see in uh, clinical disorders. Only the free fraction has hormonal activity. You see, uh, as with the steroid hormones and the retinoic acid, thyroid hormones across the cell's membrane and bind to intracellular receptors, uh, actually alpha-1, alpha-2, beta-1, and beta-2 receptors. This is the mode of action, as you know, stimulate these cell, cell receptors, which act alone and pairs all together with retinoid X receptors as transcription factors to modulate DNA transcription. So it is very important to keep in your mind an assessment of thyroid hormone. At what time you do free, you do or you send or you ask for T3 free, T, free hormones and uh, binding hormone. So uh, t since TBG, thyroid binding hormone or a protein or a globin, is impaired in patient with nephrotic syndrome and patient uh, using uh, androgen, there will be deficiency of TBG. So what will happen? So, the TBG will It will be uh, elevated. So you have to uh, uh, check and assess uh, uh, TBG or uh, check or evaluate the thyroid hormone and uh, and uh, keeping your uh, this knowledge in, uh, back in your mind in order to assess the disorder. While in patients, pregnant women, or uh, receiving contraceptive pills what, or liver disease, what will happen? There will be TBG elevation, and accordingly, you will get false results in reading if you don't assess the uh, free th uh, thyroxine. This is important for you since you are candidate, this comes uh, across, uh, this comes uh, frequently in examination, admit it makes confusion, a little bit uh, confusion for you in the examination. So please, if you didn't understand, I will, can repeat myself and can I can repeat uh, 10 times in order to keep this knowledge and information in your mind in order to ask a question, a question uh, uh, in this way because it is, it is frequently coming in because it makes confusion. And this is what, uh, what, what do we need in examination, is to find the student or candidate alert for the, uh, these things or, uh, or not alert, which are, uh, they are very important actually in clinical practice. They are not theoretical. They are of important clinical implications. So please, if you don't understand, I will repeat myself. Uh, is it clear? Yes. Okay. Next. Now this is the, what we have told. What we have talked about uh, thyroxine, how it's synthesized, how it is released by uh, meticulous and uh, uh, mechanism. Uh, this. You need sodium, uh, uh, iodine, some porter. Uh, if it is deficient, there will be congenital uh, hypothyroidism. Uh, the sodium, iodine, some porter. This is how pendrides, uh, pendrine. These have a, like, please observe sodium, iodine, uh, some porter. is important for the genesis of thyroid hormone. If there is deficiency of this, what will happen? You will face an infant congenital hypothyroidism. So also, bendrine is important for the, uh, in the synthesis of thyroid hormone. If it is deficient, there will be bendrine syndrome, characterized by big thyroid goiter, large goiter. Have you seen a bendrine syndrome? Have you seen? I have seen cases of bendrine. Big goiter, infant with big goiter, hypothyroidism, 
creatures of Allah and plus sensory neurons definitely very important these are the triad of Bendred syndrome so uh, it is very important to these to know this uh, important background in order to assess congenital hypothyroidism. Next. Uh, we have mentioned this feedback uh, regulation, positive uh, and negative uh, with uh, pituitary gland. If T3, T4 uh, is low in the circulation, what will happen? TSH. Positive feedback uh, regulation, TSH will be elevated, TRH will be high, TSH will be high and the other way around. If they are elevated in, in the circulation, as in patient with uh, hyperthyroidism, what will happen? High T3, high T4, low TCH, low TRH. And this is important biochemical or hormonal changes that we have to keep in mind in order to assess hypo or hyperfunctional states. Next. Thyroid system, and again, as, as we mentioned, uh, this is a repeat. You see increased the important function of the thyroid hormone, T3, T4, increased metabolism, high basal metabolic rate, uh, growth, shares important for growth and development. You see, growth and development, so also increased catecholamine effect. Why? Same because they have the same oil source, the same precursor, which is the amino acid or tyrosine. And here, if you know these, the physiological background, you can correct, you can give a lot of support and help uh, to your patient. Next. Now, disorder of the thyroid gland include diverse uh, broad spectrum, uh, ranging from hypothyroidism, uh, to hyperthyroidism, to thyroiditis, uh, and uh, to malignancy or neoplasm, penine or malignancy, a tumor. Uh, next. Next. Thyroid, no, no, no. Next, repeat. Thyroid problem. Now, how can we diagnose? Before we go to the disorder, uh, I mean, hypothyroidism, hyperthyroidism, thyroiditis, and its causes, a neoplasm or a tumor, uh, adenoma or uh, carcinoma, we have to know how to assess thyroid function, irrespective of the disorder, whether high or high. So, first of all, you send biochemical assessment, I mean hormonal assessment. What do you send? T3, T4, and TSH. TSH alone in patient with hypothyroidism is usually of help and primary hypothyroidism for diagnosis of primary, no secondary, then the secondary signs are TSH low, my feelings. TSH, high TSH in primary hypothyroidism. And as I have mentioned, measurement of TSH is important for diagnosis because it has long, long half-diagnosis. Half half That's important. <laughs> And it is important to in follow up of your cases of uh, and in getting uh, idea about your patient is he or she compli good compliant or poor compliant is he receiving a treatment or not if the patient uh, instructed to get thyroxine hormone you can check that your patient is getting her his or her treatment or not how by checking the TSH. If, he, if she gets the treatment, TSH will be low, suppressed. If she is poor compliant, the TSH will remain high. So you can know that your patient is cheating you or cheating herself, actually, before she is. So this is biochemical assessment. Uh, the medical history, beside medical history, and the physical examination are important parts of the evaluation for thyroid problems, respective of the problem. The healthcare uh, practitioner will focus on eye because of, of of thermopathy and skin, dermatological changes, cardiac, heart, and the neurological findings. These are the vital. Uh, organ or tissue that will be affected in hyper and hypofunctional status of thyroid gland. You see, so after you uh, get history, physical examination, which includes local examination, 
and systemic examination. What is uh, important parameters in local examination that you have to concentrate? The size of the gland, so the site of the gland, sometimes the uh, uh, lingual thyroid, uh, the size of the gland is very important. I mean, large gland, more goiter, and the consistency of the gland, which is normally soft, abnormally firm and consistent or hard. Uh, then vascularity of the tumor, highly vascular gland, as in patients with uh, hyperthyroidism or a Graves disease or malignancy. And then you have to look for tenderness. And then you have to examine for uh, uh, palpation of the gland, uh, right lobe, left lobe, isthmus, uh, during deglutition, uh, which is very important. And then you have to assess for uh, supra, uh, I mean, uh, thoracic or in location or uh, ectopic uh, or thyroerythrosternal thyroid gland. How? By telling the patients to swallow, then it will, you will feel if it is uh, retrosternal in origin. Sometimes what to do for retrosternal goiter, the uh, uh, Bemberton sign, Bemberton sign is to tell the patient to elevate uh, the hands upwards, uh, he will feel this neck and his face will be become congested and blithery. Uh, that means there is retrosternal goiter causing suppression or compressive symptoms. Beside to this uh, local examination, as I have mentioned, you, are to, you have to examine the cervical group of lymph nodes, uh, maybe involved by metastasis and thyroid malignancy. And then you do systemic examination, vital examination, neurological, cardiovascular, all systems should be included. In this is, after you get history and physical examination, you go to lab evaluation by blood test, uh, TSH. In most cases, this is the single most useful lab test and diagnosis of thyroid disease. When there is an excess of thyroid hormone in the blood, I'm going to in hyperthyroidism, TSH will be low as a, it's a symbol uh, under a graduate knowledge, the other way around in patient with hypothyroidism. A free T4 uh, is one of the thyroid hormones. High T4 may indicate hyperthyroidism. Low T4 may indicate, more must, may indicate. Uh, hypothyroidism. T3 is another uh, hormone important. High T3 may indicate hyper, low T3 may indicate hypothyroidism. TSH receptor antibody, this is very important. Uh, one of the causes of congenital hypothyroidism is antibody to, T, uh, to, to TSH receptor. Fadent lathet, sarat al asbab, either sodium, iodine, some portal deficiency or bendrine deficiency or TSH. antibody to TSH, uh, to uh, TSH. TSH. Uh, TSH antibody uh, receptors. So high TSH, high TSH, high TSH, but yet uh, T3, T4 are low because the receptors are not yielding to its, its, effect, its effect, so the gland will not be stimulated. In spite of high TSH present in the circulation, T3, T4 will be low. You see, these are the causes of congenital hypothyroidism. In nuclear thyroid, and the next step we do thyroid ultrasound. Thyroid ultrasound, how, what for? To assess the side of the gland, is it cystic? Is there any calcification, vascularity, activity, uh, and uh, uh, presence or absence of lymph nodes? And these are very important and, uh, uh, by ultrasound, and it is non-invasive, actually. Uh, then we do uh, scanning of the thyroid, as in patients with hyperthyroidism or tumor, uh, adenoma, uh, that secrete thyroid hormones. During this scan, a small amount of radioactive iodine is swallowed. Yani radioactive me one three one iodine is swallowed, or a similar material, technetium scan uh, ninety nine uh, technetium is injected into the blood, 
and then that radio iodine swallowed or a technetium injected intravenously and then an imaging study of the thyroid is taken that reveals localization of the radioactivity increased uptake of the radioactive iodine material in the thyroid gland indicates hyperthyroidism irrespective of the cause it does not give you a clue for the cause uh, it gives you a clue for the function if it is high radioiodine uptake means thyroidic psychosis, hyperthyroidism and what for Graves disease autoimmune to uh, toxic uh, goiter uh, multinodular toxic goiter adenoma hyperfunction while patient uh, with uh, factitious thyroiditis I mean they self administer themselves uh, with thyroxine there will be hyper Thyro, uh, th hyperthyroxinemia, excess thyroxine in the circulation, but low radioactive iodine. You see? So also in postpartum thyroiditis. Low radioactive iodine uptake. This is a way to differentiate between genuine hyperthyroidism and uh, nanotro hyperthyroidism or thyroxinemia. Thyroxinemia by far is different from thyrotoxicosis. This is hyperfunction. Hyperthyroidism is hyperfunction, hyperthyroxine. While hyperthyroid, it is not hyperfunction, it is of the gland, it is hyper elevation of thyroxine hormone. And again, this is important point in your examination. You have to focus on it. Don't uh, let them cheat you. Don't let the examiner cheat you or uh, uh, you don't answer this. So while decreased uptake is present in hypothyroidism, as you anticipate, this test should not be performed on women who are pregnant. Definitely, you are not to go there, radio build material to pregnant because it is teratogenic, neither technetium nor uh, radioactive uh, iodine 131. Uh, Okay, next. Sad. Next. Previous. So the TSH receptor antibody. Yes. We said that the TSH receptor is present in T3T4. Now it is present in this antibody is present in the Graves disease. Graves disease is not in T3T4. No. Graves disease, uh, uh, there is an entity called autoimmune thyroid disorders. This entity includes a Graves disease. Hashimoto's thyroiditis and the primary hypothyroidism. They interchange to each other. The Graves disease may change to a primary, uh, primary hyperthyroidism. Hashimoto's th thyroiditis may change to Graves disease, may change to primary. These autoimmune diseases characterized by presence of THS, uh, TSH receptor antibodies in some cases, uh, they car are characterized by uh, anti-TBO antibodies and they may have TBII antibodies as we will come across uh, just a moment so they are characterized by presence of auto antibodies TBO antibodies in 90% of cases uh, TSI uh, anti-thyroglobulin antibody present in 10 to 20 percent of patients so these are very important uh, parameters uh, serological or biochemical parameter in diagnosis of autoimmune thyroid disease and in follow-up of cases after treatment after a section of or surgery or a surgical resection of the tumor you will check these uh, antibody is uh, or biochemical markers in order to assess uh, is it uh, complete resection or not if it, or a trick the tumor may recur back again so you have to check this one. so also if you treat the Graves disease you and for, in your follow-up you have to check these antibodies in order to assess you get a cure complete resolution or complete disappearance or if they reappear again it means the disease uh, there is recurrence of the disease. Is it clear? Yes. Yes. And, uh, so, uh, 
you know, we are talking about thyroid, then CT scan, uh, CT scan is occasionally used, or not commonly, to look for the extent of a large goiter, a large goiter into the upper chest, or, I mean, uh, retrosternal goiter, CT scan, sometimes diagnosis, uh, give a diagnosis of retrosternal goiter, uh, or to look for a narrowing or displacement of the trachea, breathing tube uh, from the goiter, and this is important uh, before endotracheal, before keeping endotracheal or doing endotracheal intubation. If the trachea is collapsed, you know it may injure the tube, uh, will be uh, will traumatize the trachea. So it is important preoperative uh, assessment before giving endotracheal intubation to your patient. You have to do CT scan or chest x-ray to localize or and to see the anatomy of the trachea. This is very important. Next. Now, we come to the source. So by now, we finished the anatomy, the embryology, the physiology of the gland, and we, how to assess and evaluate a thyroid disorder or a thyroid gland disease. And now we come uh, to pass, well, now we have, uh, we should pass to uh, clinical disorder. We, in my talk of day, of this day, I will include hypothyroidism. And serially, we'll talk on thyroiditis, and we will talk of uh, thyrotoxicosis uh, uh, and different causes. And then we talk about neoplasm, whether benign or malignant, and how do, how do we diagnose these uh, clinical entities and how we, uh, how we uh, plan for their treatment and support of these patients irrespective of the disorder. We, let us start with hypothyroidism. First causes, we have mentioned congenital hypothyroidism. Causes of congenital hypothyroidism, Ganna? sodium iodine, sodium iodine support deficiency, Bendrine Bendrine deficiency. Bendrine 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 deficiency. deficiency, and TSH, Antibody, receptor, antibody. Yes. TSH, receptor, uh, TSH, R, and receptor, antibodies. Okay? Congenital hypothyroidism constitutes, or the incidence, one pair, four thousand, in your body. You see? One bil If it is left untreated, this baby will suffer from neurological defect, mental retardation, IQ cannot go in his schooling or in her schooling. Uh, abdominal protuberancy or cretinism, as you mentioned. Gro short stature. Uh, growth and neurological development will be impaired. Uh, short stature. Besides the uh, clinical features of hypothyroidism that we will talk about. Lethargic, confused, dry skin, uh, poor appetite, uh, increase in weight, and uh, so on. So. These are the features of uh, congenital. Besides, how could you catch congenital hypothyroidism? Uh, in, in developed countries, they made uh, screening uh, for this because of poor neurological development, handicap. They will become handicap, and that's why they screen in your body, uh, heal bad uh, blood uh, sample. Uh, taken for screening of TSH and T3 hormone, T4 hormone, actually for TSH. So screening for, uh, will catch the uh, diagnosis of congenital hypothalamus. And usually you have to think in, uh, of the problem and you have to have a high index of suspicion for the, the disease. And patients with pro and infants with prolonged jaundice or lethargic or reluctant to feed Prolonged jaundice, one of the causes of prolonged jaundice is neonatal hypothyroidism, congenital in nature. So, is it clear? Congenital hypothyroidism. What is loss of thyroid, the other cause, loss of thyroid tissue, either by treatment of thyroid, not different causes, congenital hypothyroidism can be present from birth. This is commonly discovered early with nationwide newborn screening for this disease. And now, uh, any patient with prolonged jaundice, 
infants, infant will brought, you will, they will screen for hypothyroidism. Defects in the production of thyroid hormone. Hashimoto's, I mean, the uh, causes could be Hashimoto, autoimmune hypothyroidism, could be congenital, could be autoimmune hypothyroidism, could be Hashimoto's thyroid, that could be a drug, a weatrogenic, either surgical resection or radio iodine therapy or antithyroid, prolonged use of antithyroid drugs or, or other drugs, amiodarone, so hypothyroidism, anti-arrhythmic drug, or antidepressant lithium. So, what are the causes of hypothyroidism? First, developmental and congenital hypothyroidism. Second, autoimmune hypothyroidism. Third, Defective drugs. Hashimoto. Hashimoto thyroiditis. Medication. Medication, surgery. Medication, surgery. Radio, يعني thyroid ablation by surgery, by radio label iodine, by antithyroid drugs, by antidepressant lithium, by uh, antiarrhythmic drug like carbamaz, uh, like uh, amiodarone or cardarone. These are the co uh, causes. Actually, we have talked about congenital. What is about uh, immune, autoimmune hypothyroidism? Autoimmune hypothyroidism. Antithyroid antibodies are present. As I have mentioned, in autoimmune thyroid disease, antibodies are important. Uh, it is not important to do, to, uh, the, I mean, important, yes, but not only uh, the importance is to diagnose hypothyroidism. You have to look for the cause of the etiology. Commonly, autoimmune disease. You see? In, in patients, with, in areas in which there is iodine deficiency, Hashimoto's uh, thyroid, that is the common cause. And other uh, is the common cause. While iodine deficiency worldwide is the cause of hypothyroids. You see? see what, so we mentioned these causes. Next. Hypothyroid. Now, before we go, uh, we have to talk. Uh, in a short way for patients with autoimmune thyroid disease. As we have mentioned, uh, three uh, types of thyroid disorder, a Graves disease, Hashimoto's thyroiditis, and primary or idiopathic hypothyroidism. These, uh, actually, these patients with autoimmune hypothyroidism, uh, they are uh, common in uh, specific countries, especially in certain population, especially Japanese of, well, that's the name, Hashimoto's thyroiditis. They discovered this entity in among uh, Japanese. Uh, actually, it was uh, by histology, there will be lymphocytic predominance early in the disease, uh, lymphocytic reaction. There is a pathogenesis, immunological sharing of uh, cytokines, T lymphocyte, B lymphocyte, and uh, in conclusion, there will be lymphocytic predominance, and there will be uh, earlier, uh, it is a mild in form, then as it comes, as the pathology remains and untreated, it will uh, progress to complete fibrosis of the gland, and uh, then it becomes severe. What? An inflammatory infiltrate then becomes fibrous the gland and becomes firm in consistency and T3, T4 will be very low and patients will be so earlier in the disease of autoimmune hypothyroid they be subclinical or non overt I mean not apparent and a subclinical and then late in the advance they will become apparent hypothyroidism or a clear hypothyroidism. In these patients, if you assess these antibodies, as I have mentioned, anti-TBO antibodies, it will be positive. Anti-thyroglobin antibodies, it will be positive. Uh, TSI antibodies, TBI antibodies, all will become positive, the majority of these. So sometimes you need to go to histology, find needle aspiration uh, guided by ultrasound uh, to see the histological. Uh, picture of uh, of uh, thyroid uh, of Hashimoto's thyroid that's and I have a slide 
and, and different uh, and different slides. Uh, then we will uh, then uh, I will uh, uh, visualize or I will uh, show it to you next, inshallah. Now, after we diagnose autoimmune hypothyroidism, <coughs> we mention the age of infant usually after six. Female more than male. Four uh, to eight percent incidence annually in women, while uh, two to four percent in male. Annual incidence after age six, and the onset usually insidious or gradual. It is not acute process. As you see, the pathology is ongoing process, so the onset is a gradual and uh, range from subclinical then over or clinical hypothyroidism. What are the symptoms besides? So there are uh, illness, signs and symptoms related to the cause, and there are uh, signs and symptoms related to the hypothyroidism, irrespective of the cause, as a hypofunctional status. What are these symptoms? We will uh, talk about the symptoms of hypothyroidism include an infant according to the age. At what age you uh, deal with patient or uh, present to you? At what age? If uh, you are dealing with hypothyroidism during infancy, these symptoms will include constipation, poor feeding, poor growth, jaundice, prolonged jaundice, and excessive tiredness and fatigue. This is very important. And as I have mentioned, the prolonged neonatal jaundice, you have to screen uh, for hypothyroidism as a cause of this jaundice. Symptoms of during children include symptoms similar to adult symptoms, excessive fatigue, poor growth, poor school performance. I mean, their score in, in, in a study is underscoring. They get underscoring. They fail. Uh, every year becomes uh, two years. Uh, they fail in the examinations because of intellectual performance, low IQ, uh, untreated, neglected. Uh, they suffer from neurological mental insufficiency. Symptoms in adult uh, age group uh, reveals the following. Early symptoms include fa <coughs> easy fatigue, absorption, fatigue, poor tolerance to cold exposure, and constipation, poor appetite, and weight gain. This is very important. Uh, poor appetite and weight gain. <coughs> Carbon tunnel syndrome, pain at the wrist, and numbness of the hands. So also, uh, delay reflexes by examination. Uh, the cover phase of the uh, reflex will be prolonged, and uh, sometimes there are other neurological uh, cerebral cerebellar ataxia uh, reversible after treatment cerebellar ataxia uh, chorea and uh, uh, myotonia in some cases myopathy uh, all these are feature neurological features of uh, uh, adult hypothyroidism later symptoms poor appetite and weight gain uh, dry skin hair loss and alopecia, uh, intellectual ability worsening, deeper and hoarse, dusky voice, hoarse voice, buffness around the eyes, characteristic of accumulation of glycoprotein, uh, and so also non biting edema uh, called wings edema legs, and then irregular uh, depression, and sometimes of the cases. Uh, diagnosed by depression. They are hypothyroid cases. Uh, they uh, consulted the uh, psychiatrist for their depression. They started antidepressant. They became worse and they brought to me. They di I diagnosed hypo once you treat hypothyroidism, the psychological or the psychiatric manifestation. So hypothyroidism may present with the neurological with psychiatry. Psychiatric manifestations of hypothyroidism include depression, by bipolar depression, manic depressive psychosis, so also acute schizophrenia or schizophrenia like, and uh, uh, personality liability or mood changes. 
this is uh, the psychiatric manifestations. Now, and neurological manifestations, I have mentioned uh, the neurological manifestations of the disease. Now, uh, irregular, what happen, What will happen to the woman if, uh, if she has uh, hypothyroidism? Her cycle become uh, our mother oligomen oligomenorrhea, uh, menorrhagia, or amenorrhea. So both sexes will be, uh, the libido will be affected in both sexes. And both sexes. Libido will be affected, fertility will be affected. So then both aerodism may cause infertility, true. May, uh, may affect, may decrease libido in both sexes, true. Okay? So what is the mechanism behind that I have mentioned in physiology? Prolactin. Huh? What the prolactin? Prolactin, because they have hyperprolactinemia mm -hmm. in some patients, and it is the cause of low libido and uh, infertility and galactoric. No, I come to you. Uh, there are 30% uh, of patients, they suffer from cardiac, pericardial effusion. Rarely it, process, it goes uh, to pericardial uh, tamponade. So, pericardial effusion, cardiac manifestation include pericardial effusion, cardiomyopathy, uh, low stroke volume, and elevated peripheral vascular resistance, high. So low cardiac output, heart failure, high peripheral vascular resistance, so bradycardia, hypertension, diastolic hypertension, and cardiomyopathy, and ischemic heart disease due to hyperlipidine, atherosclerosis. So this is the cardiac manifestation. Is it clear to you? Yes. Now, uh, serous cavity effusions, like a pleural effusion, may be a presenting feature. Ascites may be a presenting feature of uh, hypothyroidism. Okay? Uh, what will be effect on pulmonary function? Uh, what will, the eff will be the effect of hypothyroidism on pulmonary function? Normal pulmonary function test, but characteristically, patients, your patients suffer from dyspnea. What is the mechanism behind that? Why are these uh, are they Disney? They are Disney because of the following: number one, the respiratory muscle uh, incompetence or difficult uh, poor compliance. This is one. Second, uh, respiratory center drive is difficult. Yani, uh, not stimulated. Hypoventilation mm, uh, is another. Sleep apnea syndrome. Sometimes very large uh, protruded so. tank, they swallow and cause sleep apnea syndrome due to obstruction of their breathing. So these are the causes of uh, pulmonary function anomalies or abnormal. And then pulmonary function test is normal. Like in your patient commonly dyspnea because of pleural effusion and because of other causes. So one of the uh, Lung manifestations is a pleural fusion of fibrocytes. You see, is it clear for your uh, questions? Now, nah. next. Ah, there are uh, changes in the blood hematology. Patients may uh, characteristically they have pallor due to anemia, and the type of anemia either normal cytic normal normal cytic normal chronic anemia, part of a chronic illness, or macrocytic anemia. Uh, um, uh, MCV will be 98 or more uh, and uh, could be iron deficiency anemia when they suffer from menorrhage in, in women uh, due to iron deficiency. So this is the type of anemia that the patient may suffer from. Now, hypothyroidism during pregnancy, this is very important. First, you have to uh, treat the patients before, conce before conception. If you see their uh, with hypothyroidism, you have to treat, you have to replace hormone, adequate hormone. Remembering you, hormonal requirement during pregnancy is higher than usual. Higher than usual. If you have 150, you increase to up to 200 microgram per 100 cc. Okay? Uh, give two tablets 
H100 مايكروغرام يعني حبيتين 200 مايكروغرام بير دي ديورنج برجنسي اذروايز وات ويل هابن تو ذا فيتاس هايبوثايروديزم don't ovulate or produce, as we mentioned, it is an infertility, because of infertility, uh, mature eggs in a regular manner, which makes it difficult for them, uh, for them to conceive or to become pregnant. It is a difficult new diagnosis to make based on a clinical observation, symptoms, uh, history, clinical examination, the signs and symptoms of hypothyroidism, uh, mentioned are also prominent symptoms of normal pregnancy. And diagnosed hypothyroidism during pregnancy increases the chance of stillbirth or growth retardation of the fetus. It also increases the chance that the mother may experience complications of pregnancy such as anemia, eclampsia, and the placental abrosia. Placentia abrosia. Okay, these are the problems. Probably the largest group of women who will have hypothyroidism during a pregnancy are those who are currently on thyroid hormone replacement. I mean, the cause is antithyroid uh, uh, drugs or medication. The ideal thyroid C replacement dose uh, during a pregnancy may rise by 20 to 50 percent during a pregnancy, as I have mentioned. It is important to have regular checks of T4 and TSH blood levels as soon as a pregnancy is confirmed and frequently through the first 20 weeks of a pregnancy to make sure the woman is taking the correct medication dose in order to avoid these hazards to the mother and to her fetus. Next. How can we treat hypothyroids? How can we treat hypothyroidism? Uh, first of all, treatment of the cause is possible, and second, so we have to direct. You have to direct your attention to the cause and looking and searching for a cause. If it is a drug, you have to avoid the drug. If it is radio label iodine or, uh, or surgical resection, if it is amiodarone, if it is lithium, you can avoid this medication. Otherwise, if there is complete destruction of the gland, you cannot uh, treat. Uh, the only hope for this patient is permanent replacement therapy. Permanent, you listen to the word permanent replacement therapy and you can adjust the dose. Uh, uh, the, uh, med this medication, I mean hormone replacement therapy with the thyroxine is the mainstay of thyroid hormone replacement therapy in hypothyroidism. This is a synthetic form of thyroxine. This is uh, exactly the same hormone that the thyroid makes. The body tissues convert it to the active product, uh, L3, T4. It's uh, T3 peripherally. Side effects are rare, and it has an excellent safety record. Uh, T3 is rarely used alone as a thyroid hormone replacement because it has a much shorter persistence in the blood than L-thyroxine. Its use can cause rapid increases in LT3 concentration, which can be dangerous in the elderly and in people with cardiac disease because it augments uh, ischemic cardiac disease, may potentiate myocardial infarction, cardiac arrhythmia, and elderly patients, and that's why you have to adjust the dose. It should not be used in elderly individual. Uh, it may be used in combination well, uh, for people who have poor symptomatic relief with L-thyroxine alone. Thyroid extract or natural thyroid hormone, this is a dried and powdered big thyroid gland, comes from the big uh, chanzir. 
and the hormone is not purified and extra amount T4 and T3 can be available, uh, can be variable. This is not recommended as a thyroid hormone replacement, half TG. Then it is not used because not to purified hormone and it has side effects of tissue, uh, animal tissue, it will be immunogenic. Uh, there is an excess of T3 in this preparation uh, treatment. Okay, next. So, there is a special concern with myxedema coma. So what is myxedema coma? It is advanced, neglected, untreated hypothyroidism in adult age group. Usually elderly women after age 60 uh, becomes confused, lethargic, drowsy, stubborn until she passes into coma. Sometimes she got a epileptic attack and EEG changes a slow wave activity and EEG changes and uh, cold extremities. If you go to the physiological function of the hormone, you can deduce what are the clinical features. Cold extremity due to high peripheral vascular resistance, uh, spasm, diversion of blood from the skin, faster ball, uh, cold, uh, the hoarse voice uh, and uh, constipation. Uh, the, there are a triggering factor or a precipitating factor of this myxedema coma, and as we, I will come across to uh, of this precipitating factor. So, myxedema coma is a loss of a brain function as a result of severe, long standing, low level of thyroid hormone in the blood, hypothyroidism, advanced. Myxedema coma is considered a life threatening complication. So it is one of an important emergency uh, medical problem. You have to treat energetically and rapidly to, to preserve life of a human beings with this syndrome and represents the far more serious side effect, side of the spectrum of thyroid disease. Myxedema coma is not common, but tends to be seen more frequently in elderly patients and in women more than in men. There is an increased incidence in the winter months, which called exposure, which is likely secondary to the extremes and the temperature. Myxedema coma can actually result in death. Fortunately, the condition is rare. Fortunately, the condition is uncommon or rare. Next. The symptoms of hypothyroidism, the clear, same symptoms. Next. The cause is of myxedema coma. Most patients with myxedema coma have a history of hypothyroidism, long standing, untreated, neglected, thyroid surgery, or radioactive iodine treatment for thyroid disease. Very rarely, the problem is not caused by, inable, by the inability of thyroid gland to make or synthesize thyroid hormone. Uh, thyroxine, but uh, rather is caused by the failure of the pituitary gland or the hypothalamus to correctly signal the thyroid gland to perform its normal functions. In this situation, the thyroid gland is normal, but it is not receiving the signals, I mean the stimulator, TSH or TRH, <coughs> after TSH stimulation. Uh, from the pituitary gland or hypothalamus to make the thyroid hormone uh, capable of producing that. Uh, now, uh, next, what are the precipitating or triggering factor? You have to search for, you have to ask yourself, what is the cause of myxedema coma? What is the precipitating factor? Like you dealing with heart failure, what is the cause of heart failure? What is the precipitating of heart failure? or exacerbating factors. Similarly, and you have to treat the cause, you have to treat the precipitating factor, or you have to avoid in order to get good outcome in the management of these patients. So, the triggering factors include uh, uh, sudden coma in person with poorly controlled, these include a drug, particularly sedatives, uh, the narcotics, anesthetic, antidepressant, lithium, cordarone, infections or sepsis, and cold exposure, stroke, cold trauma, heart failure itself, uh, GI tract bleeding, GI bleeding, 
uh, hypothermia. The temperature of the body may reach to 23 degrees centigrade, uh, abnormally low body temperature, and failing or to take thyroid medication as prescribed. Poor patient compliance is one of the triggering factors. So these are the precipitating or triggering factors that sh you should look for them and you uh, deal with them energetically. Next. The symptoms of myxedema coma, when a patient presents with myxedema, we have talked about the body temperature is usually abnormally low, hypothermia. The core temperature may be as low as at uh, 26, and it may reach uh, to 23 degrees centigrade rather than, uh, I mean, lower, lower than 26.6 degrees centigrade. Severe mental changes, including hallucination, disorientation, seizures, as I have mentioned, with uh, AEG changes, slow activity waves, and AEG, and ultimately deep calm. You see, if you cannot save the patients uh, in a hurry, you may lose the human being. Significant swelling, edema, all over the body with the swollen eyes and thickening of the tongue, sparse dry hair, and loss of the outer thirds of the eyebrows, difficulty breathing, dyspnea, as we, are, as we have mentioned, the mechanism or the cause of dyspnea, multifactorial, collections of fluid around the lungs and heart, pleural fusion, pericardial fusion, uh, which rarely exceeds, uh, which rarely progresses to pericardial tamponade. Uh, the heart may slow down, I mean heart failure, low output, and its ability to pump blood forward can be impaired. The GI tract does not function, uh, motility will be lost, and constipation, pseudocolon, intestinal obstruction, paralytic alias, and sometimes it becomes paralyzed, thereby necessitating surgery, and the blood test abnormalities are as a, as a result of the increased fluid in their body, for example, sodium levels, a drop because of dilution, so dilution or hyponatremia, which is caused by the body retaining extra uh, extra water. Reminding you, one of the important causes of myxedema coma is dilution and hyponatremia, so also hypoglycemia. Hypoglycemia and hyponatremia are a triggering factor of myxedema coma. Next, how do we deal with myxedema coma diagnosis is easy and the treatment is easy actually by uh, pharmacological and non-pharmacological. But what is meant by non-pharmacological, you have to blanket, you have to warm, but not overwarming the patient, or elevate the temperature, bring the patient from cold, from cold to uh, warm area, a blanket sometimes benef benef is beneficial, and the IV fluid, dextrose, hypertonic fluid is useful, not isotonic, hypertonic, dextrose saline, sometimes steroid therapy, dexamethanozone administration is important for them, treatment of infection, antibiotic, and uh, besides that, correct uh, electrolyte imbalance, uh, and uh, we correct hypoglycemia by dextrose, hypertonic solution, and IV uh, thyroxine, uh, levothyroxine, IV intravenously, Sometimes you need to get 100 micro, uh, sorry, 500 microgram per day. 500 mic microgram administration, then maintenance dose. And you have to do ECG, you have to investigate your patient, and you have to deal with a human being as emergency uh, case, life-threatening case, uh, and you can save actually these patients uh, from death. Uh, if you are dealing it, uh, correctly and energetically. While mild hypothyroid disorder can be managed by primary care physicians, myxedema coma is generally managed by a thyroid specialist. Here is the role of endocrinologist because the treatment can be complicated and critical and you may lose human life. Next.
Exedema coma can be prevented. Is it a preventable disease? Yes. By good compliance, taking medication, dealing with the uh, cause, uh, avoiding of trigonal factors that we have mentioned, and uh, precipitating factors, uh, avoiding lithium, uh, amoyadarone, uh, antithyroid uh, drugs, uh, uh, follow up, good follow up, monitoring of these patients taking drugs. So it is a preventable disease. If an individual has symptoms, that concerns them, but has not been diagnosed with hypothyroidism, they should visit their healthcare practitioner to discuss their concerns and explore the options uh, for testing uh, for thyroid imbalance. And we actually, uh, this is the job of the GP, general practitioner, rather than the endocrinologist. Uh, though, uh, if, it, if it is reached to the genuine mixed edema coma, it is primarily the job of the endocrinologist and it is very important uh, to, be, uh, to be dealt with appropriately, energetically, and correctly. Next, in order to get good outcome. So by